If you follow my channel, you might remember a video I did last year about making your own onion sets. In the past, I've grown onion starts, and they're always kind of problematic because they take a really long time to develop and uh, usually are really susceptible to disease, and uh, I don't end up getting very good results from those. But the reason that I grow onions from seed is because it's hard to find onion sets in the varieties that I want to grow and organically. So I decided to grow these onion sets, which you know are the little bulbs that you buy that are already sort of ready to plant first thing in the spring. And so I wanted to see if I could grow my own onion sets of the varieties that I like to plant. And uh, you know, I had some doubts as to how that would go because I know onions are a biennial. And so if you plant them the first year, they're supposed to grow the bulb, and then if you plant them out the second year, they're supposed to flower. And I was banking on the fact that the tiny little onion sets would not have enough energy to be able to flower the second year, and so that's what I was figuring how they're able to grow these onion sets that then they sell. And they're ready to plant first thing in the spring, you don't have to wait, you don't have to do starts early in the season when it's too cold, and you just put them in the ground, they always do really well. They're very reliable. So last year I did that experiment. I planted a bunch of onions, you know, in a tight row, really close together in my hoop house, and then I let them dry down before they got too big. I stopped watering them. And uh, so I ended up with these little sets. I stored them over the winter, and now you see the continuation of this experiment when I'm actually planting out these onion sets. Well, I had these onion starts uh, in my house while I was in Florida for the winter, and uh, it got pretty cold in there, but they seem to stay all right on the second floor. Um, and they look pretty normal. I mean, some of them are kind of dried out, uh, but they're sprouting a little bit now, and they look like any kind of onion sets that you'd buy at the store. Uh, although they are, I guess, sprouting a little more than they would be. But it's time to plant them. There's quite a bit of variation in size, but since I've got a lot of them, I'm going to try planting the biggest ones first. See, there's a few really tiny ones that I don't think are going to amount to much, so I won't even bother with those. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I was trying to get these in before the rain came. All right, so it's been, I don't know, maybe a month or a month and a half since I planted out these onion sets, and you can see they're doing really well. They look like onions and doing everything they should to be globe onions eventually. Um, I have a little bit of an experiment here with testing how straw mulching compares to um, bare ground. I have this idea that onions do better on bare ground because of temperature, uh, being hotter and for some reason they just seem to thrive better but I'm gonna do a little experiment and see if there's a there's a difference in size obviously the mulch ground is gonna have more regulated water but the sets are looking good and I've planted a number of these out in the vineyard as well um, I just ended up having more sets than I probably need as far as onions but it's been a good experiment and uh, We'll keep, uh, keep you up to date. You found the best place to sit right on top of all those onions. Yeah, so this is the latest update on the onion sets and uh, they're getting bigger. Some of them did set a flower head at the top and I just pinched that off, but that's kind of normal for onion sets to do. And they appear to be getting bigger. We've had a crazy spring we had probably 15 inches of rain in May alone and then we had a little bit of a break and then we went back to uh, deluge in the last week or so so and we've probably gotten another five six seven inches maybe I don't know it's been a lot of rain but the onions are doing pretty well 
and the experiment to see whether the uh, mulched onions did better or the bare soil onions did better and definitely the bare soil onions uh, are holding up much better growing much better and so I just took all the mulch off of the other ones so that's the latest update and you know these have a, quite a while to go um, a lot more of the ones that were mulched uh, sort of broke off or fell over at the base here and that means they're just not going to do very well because what they need is this kind of top growth in order to get big and that's not happening and uh, if I can keep the puppy dog out of the onion bed that will happen to a lot less of them I don't know why but she has this entire space to lay in and she decides to lay right on top of the onions okay so it's early July and I wanted to give you one last check-in on these onion sets um, they're pretty much done, most of them, and you know, there, there definitely are some issues with them. You can see like this one here had a seed head on it, and when they form this kind of a central seed head stalk, they don't tend to put as much energy into the bulb itself. This one doesn't have one, a lot of them don't have them. Most of the ones that don't have them actually fell over, and I think a lot of the reason for the crappy results of this uh, experiment has to do with the shitty season that we've had that we got so much rain all of May we got very little sunlight it was basically cloudy and rainy all the time the water the soil was saturated with water and so these things just sat here and they also got you know mold and fungus on them um, from the wet conditions and then of course banjo was laying in the bed repeatedly and knocking them over so when they knock over uh, the stems like this they tend to not develop very much and so now I've got these rather small onions you know they're still good but I was expecting to have much bigger onions from these varieties and so um, mostly because of the weather I would say that this this effort was kind of a failure um, Considering the amount of work that I put into it, um, the harvest is going to be minimal, but it's, but it's all because of crappy weather. Um, and there's not really a lot we can do about that except stop climate change from happening. Uh, so you can see like this one here is a good example. This is a, one of those seed head stalks. And you know, the, this would have been a vigorous, probably a much bigger um, onion. It also could be that because these ones that I used here were some of the bigger sets that I let the sets get a little too big and so they had enough energy or they were triggered to actually send up a seed head instead of forming more bulb. So that's something that I, I learned. It's, it's hard to know when you have a season like this that's it's a really poor test season um, if the factor was the weather or if it was some kind of mistake that you made in the process you used. So I guess this is kind of a realistic example of living sustainably is that it doesn't always work out. Sometimes you try things and they fail. Um, sometimes the weather screws you over. Sometimes it's just something that happens that you have no control over and, uh, and then you just have to keep trying. You know, it's a learning process. You learn and you change what you do, and then hopefully next time you'll be better at what you're doing. I probably will try it again just to see if we can get a season that's not crazy. And uh, or maybe I'll plant them in the hoop house where I can actually regulate the amount of uh, water that they get so that they're not um, going to do these crazy things. So thanks for sticking with us. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.